welcome to the TaxWise Online Education Library. This lesson covers TaxWise Online with TaxWise Mobile. For 2019, TaxWise Online includes an option for a mobile application, which can allow your taxpayers to complete much of their return data on their smartphone or tablet, and then submit the data to you to complete and e-file the return. The first thing we need to do is set up your mobile app data inside of TaxWise Online. To do this, go to twonline.taxwise.com and use your client ID, the username admin, and your password to access your site. Once logged into TaxWise Online, you're going to click the drop down arrow next to the username along the top and select Settings. On the Settings page, click the Cobrand Mobile App option. TaxWise Online displays the Configure Mobile App window. Complete the fields including your ERO name, your EFIN, your address, phone number, and email address. In the Mobile App Name field, type the name you want to call your mobile application and type a shortened version of that name in the Mobile App Short Name field. This short name displays along with an icon on your client's mobile device. Lastly, the site name field will be part of your site URL. For example, if the site name is UTSAD, your site URL will be utsad.taxwisemobile.com. If you move over to the Logos tab, you're going to have the ability to upload your website logo and your mobile app logo to customize your site. Make sure that your image is the correct format, file size, and follows the recommended resolution. Use the Upload button to upload the logo that you wish to use. Last but not least, we're going to have the Preparation Fees tab. The fees entered in the following buckets, the Transmission Fee, the Tech Fee, the Service Bureau Fee, and the Doc Preparation Fee must match what you have entered on your bank application. If your fees do not match, the return will reject and fees will need to be updated. Here you can also set the amount you're going to charge for the Tax Preparation Service. Once you have configured your mobile application, click Save. TaxWise Online displays a confirmation dialog box that your co-branding information was successfully saved. Click Close. After you complete the setup components, you can share the application with your clients. Clients can download the application on their smartphone or tablet or access the tool on the computer. If the taxpayer downloads the app on their phone or tablet, TaxWise Online adds an icon to their home screen for easy access in the future. Let's look at the process for the mobile application. After your client accesses the site, he or she can either get an estimate of their refund or begin a 1040 interview and submit to you as the preparer. Let's start with the estimator and click Get Started. We see across the top four stages, we have the About You section, the Income section, the Expenses section, and then the Results section for the estimator. The taxpayer will need to provide us with some information. Here we start with what state they lived in. The taxpayer would select the state and then answer the question if they lived there for all 12 months, then click Next. Next, the taxpayer would answer the question about being single or married on December 31st of 2019, and then click Next to continue. The next question in the estimator is, are they a qualifying widower? They would select the response and then click Next to continue. The next question is in regards to what age the taxpayer is on December 31st. They would enter their age and click Next to continue. Next, they would answer the question, can they be claimed as a dependent, and click Next to continue. The last question the taxpayer would have to answer in the About You section is, do you have dependents? They would make their selection and click Next. The taxpayer moves on to the next section, which is the Income section. What income did the taxpayer receive in 2019? 
they would select all that apply. Here we'll select employment income and click next to continue. The taxpayer would complete their information based on their W-2 and click next. If the taxpayer had selected additional income options, they would have been prompted to enter that additional information. In this case, the taxpayer has moved on to the expenses section. If the taxpayer has any of the following expenses, they would select them. Included here are student loan interest, IRA contributions, education expenses, and other qualified expenses. If the taxpayer has none of those expenses, they would click next. The last step of the estimator displays the results, letting the taxpayer know that they may qualify for a refund and displays an estimated refund range, along with a disclosure stating that this is an estimate of your tax refund or amount due and should only be used as a guide. An actual refund amount due will be determined by a tax professional after submission of a completed interview. If the taxpayer wishes to move forward, they would click Continue. If the taxpayer chooses, he or she can now create an account and continue completing an interview to submit to the preparer or create an account to return and complete the interview later. Click Continue and Create Account. From this screen, the taxpayer can use an existing social media account or an email address to set up the account. Click the appropriate link to create the account and log in. Once the account is created, the taxpayer is directed to the web page to answer the interview questions. Just as we had with the estimator, we have the four sections, the about you, the income, the deductions, and the finalized section. The taxpayer would go through each of the four sections, providing additional details to the information provided through the estimator. Here, the taxpayer selects the filing status and clicks Next to continue. Next, the taxpayer is to complete the demographic data, name, date of birth, social security number. As the taxpayer scrolls down, they are asked to enter their email address and occupation as well, along with selecting if they are blind, permanently and totally disabled, if they wish to contribute to the presidential election fund, or if they can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return. Once they complete the demographic information and those questions, they can click Next to continue. They would next complete the Address section, which is then followed by the Taxpayer Identification section. Here they would provide the type of identification followed by the information such as the identification number, issue date, and expiration date. And once that information is complete, they would click Select a file to upload. If the taxpayer is using their mobile device or tablet, they can use their device to take a picture of their identification and upload it through the interview. Once the taxpayer uploads their file, they will see a message towards the bottom of the screen stating that the file was successfully uploaded. We're going to see these instances of the capability or ability to upload that information on some of the income sections, the deduction sections, where additional supporting documents are required. The taxpayer will also see the document in the documents section reflecting that information. If they feel they have uploaded the wrong documents, they can use the trash can to remove that document and re-upload the correct document. The taxpayer will continue through each of the sections uploading documents where necessary and clicking next to continue through the interview. Here we see that the taxpayer has uploaded a W-2 and now has to answer the question, do you have another W-2? They would make their selection and then click Next to continue. On the finalized section, the taxpayer will be asked if they are interested in receiving their refund in as little as 24 hours. Let's click Next to continue. Since they selected No to receiving their refund in as little as 24 hours, they are then asked 
if they wish to receive the refund via direct deposit or an IRS check. They would make their selection and click Next. Based on their selection, they're going to see the amount that will be deducted from their refund to pay for the tax preparation and filing services. If they agree, they would click Next to continue. This takes them to the Let's Review section. They have the ability to go back to each of the three sections, the About You section, the Income section, and the Deduction section to review the information for accuracy. Once they're ready to proceed, they can click Next. Next, the taxpayer needs to select what their preferred method of contact is going to be. Those options include a voice call, a text message, or an email. They would select their preference and then click Submit My Interview. The application will allow the taxpayer to track the progress of their submission and return status. They will be able to track if any additional documentation is required. The taxpayer will be prompted and allowed to upload it from the screen. For now, the taxpayer has completed their interview and can sign out. As the tax preparer within TaxWise Online, you're going to see an Import Interviews button reflecting that you have interviews available to review. If there are no interviews available for you to review, the Import Interviews button will not be visible. So let's click Import Interviews. TaxWise Online displays the Import Interviews window. Listed, we're going to see any interviews that are available. If you see the warning icon next to an interview, this is an indicator that the return is already in the system. You can delete the interview using the trash can icon. For now, let's click on the Elizabeth Smith interview. TaxWise Online pulls in the information from the interview completed on the TaxWise mobile application for you to review and complete. Any documents that were uploaded via the mobile application will be listed under Documents. If a taxpayer completed their interview via the mobile application, you will see within the return in TaxWise Online a message button giving you the ability to message that mobile customer. To send that mobile customer a message, click the Message button. TaxWise Online will display the messages with mobile user dialog box where you will be able to type a message to the taxpayer. Now that the return is within TaxWise Online, you'll be able to follow your normal process of verifying information, running diagnostics, and creating and sending that e-file to the IRS. This concludes the lesson on our new TaxWise mobile application. For more information on using TaxWise Online, please visit the TaxWise Education Library on the TaxWise Customer Solutions Center.